Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Time for a little overview of what's going on with this transformations and congruence little packet here. Um, so what's going on is you're going to discover a few things about different kinds of transformations and what things keep shapes congruent and what things don't. And so first thing, first things first, you need to know what congruent means. So congruent means you have two shapes and they have the same angles and the same side lengths. All like it has the same number of sides and all of those sides are the same length and it has the same number of angles and all those angles are the same. Uh, they're just, they're the, sh the same shape, same size, same shape. And uh, so what I like for you to do is to look on the front here it's got uh, four different pairs of shapes. And I want you to pause the video and go through and see if you can figure out if those pairs of shapes are congruent or not. I want you to say yes or no, and then provide some sort of reason why. Maybe something along the lines are they're the same side lengths and the same angles, or they're not the same sides, not the same lengths, or not the same angles, something like that. Okay? So pause the video and answer those four well, those eight questions about those four pairs of shapes. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you got to that number one. Yes, those two shapes are congruent. Uh, they are the same. They have the same side lengths and the same angles. You should, you know, have an answer here. Why? Um, on number two here, uh, these are actually not the same, not congruent shapes. Um, Strangely enough, they actually have the same side lengths. Um, like this is the same here, and all right, these are the same length, and, and these are uh, actually those are the same length. Um, but yeah, it oh, these are the same length. These are the same length, uh, and these are the same length. Like it has all the same side lengths, but these are not the same angles, and uh, these uh, vertices are in different spots. So it's kind of a weird one. Uh, this one's no. And so you should provide you know, a reason on that. Uh, three here. These two shapes are actually not congruent. Um, and the reason is right here. If you uh, if you figure out how far it is between uh, B and C and A, uh, between B and C and A here, it's actually one farther. Um, like if you, if you look at your uh, your distances here or your slope between them. Uh, if A was here, then yes, these would be congruent triangles, but it's one to the left, and that makes it not the same size anymore. And then on four, uh, these ones are congruent. Uh, it's just 180 degree rotation, so yeah, they're going to be the uh, same shape and size there. And it's funny, I mentioned, it's like, oh yeah, they're just 180 degree rotations, because certain transformations keep the shape the same, and certain ones don't. And that's what the next page is about. So what I'd like for you to do is go to the next page. Uh, and what's going on is on all of these, you're given some starting shape. Uh, and if it helps you, you may want to actually just draw that shape on these. Uh, and just kind of copy it on there. Because that's your starting shape on all of these. And what's going to happen is you need to do the transformation that it says here. So on A, just move everything uh, left two and down three. So your, your shape's just going to move like this. So ta-da, we got our new shape. Um, and that's what you're going to do for all six of these. So A through F, you're going to do the transformation that it says. So I'd like for you to, again, take a moment to do that. Uh, see if you can draw those shapes and then come back. All right, let's have you uh, check and see how things went. So our first one, left two, down three, easy peasy. Uh, this one's kind of weird. Uh, horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Uh, this function does tell you what to do. Uh, all the y's stay the same. So everything has the same y values. That stays there, these all stay there. But it does get stretched horizontally. So all the x's get times by three. Luckily, uh, these two points just stay the same. But this one gets times by three which is going to take it a six, right? Because it's right now to two times by three, you get six. So now we got a shape looking like this. Interesting. 
Uh, this one, rotate 100 degrees around the origin. Should be easy peasy here. Yeah, I've done quite a few of these before. It's gonna look like this. And then on D, reflecting over Y equals negative one. Hold on, let me draw my original triangle on these so you know where to start from. And let's draw this. So reflecting over Y equals negative one, that's down here. So we reflect it. Uh, these two points are just one away, so they become one away. And it gives you a shape looking like this. Uh, the next one is shrink a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. All the x's stay the same, but all the y's are half as much. So these two points stay the same, but a y value of three times by a half gives you three halves, which is 1.5. And so that's gonna be down here at 1.5 instead. So it gets a, a little shrunk there. Uh, and then our last one, we're dilating by a factor of negative two. Again, the function tells you what to do with the coordinates. You're gonna take them all in times by negative two. Well, zero times negative two is zero. So this point stays the same. Zero and zero stay the same. Uh, the x value on this one is negative two. When you times by negative two, you get negative four. So it's gonna come over here. The y value there was at zero. So we take two zero times by two, well, negative two. You'll get negative four, zero. So that's where that point goes. This one up here is currently at zero, three. We're gonna times by negative two. It's going to give me 0, negative 6. So that's going to put it down here. Now I've got this shape here. Okay. Uh, so that's what your shapes should have turned into if you've drawn, done all these drawings here. Uh, now what I'd like for you to do is actually categorize these. Um, some of these shapes keep the shape congruent to the original one, and some of them change the size uh, of the shape, and I want you to categorize them. Which ones do keep them the same, which ones don't? So pause the video and fill this in. All right, so hopefully you wrote down, we got translation is one that keeps it the same. We got rotation. Oof, my goodness. Handwriting, man, handwriting's hard rotation and then our last one is reflection and then over here which ones are not congruent we got horizontal stretch I you think I would know how to spell stretch um, we got vertical shrink and we got dilate or dilation, I'm going to dilation. Um, and by the way, you can have a horizontal stretch and a horizontal shrink. Uh, so I'm going to put both. Uh, just so you know, they're both options. So these ones over here are what are called rigid transformations. That means it keeps the shape congruent. Uh, and then there are some that are non rigid transformations, such as these ones. And these do not guarantee that it is the same size anymore, the same same size, same angle, same uh, lengths. It doesn't guarantee that those are the same anymore. And that's important because we are trying to prove that two shapes are congruent and you have to prove it using rigid transformations. And so let's go to the uh, the last page here. Give me one moment, let me do a little back switch. Okay, uh, so what's going on is you need to draw these transformations that are listed um, I got a couple of these drawn for you. Uh, for example, uh, this one here, I did red first and blue second. Uh, and you can kind of see what it does to these shapes. What I'd like for you to do is, well, draw them all, especially including this last one. And I want you to answer these questions about it. Are the beginning and ending shapes congruent? How do you know? You know, are they the same length, same angles or not? And once you've done that, uh, they'll give you a little bit of experience and you're going to go through and answer these questions about can you get congruent shapes using multiple transformations or not? Uh, and then at the end, you got these three problems where you need to figure out the set of transformations that were done to the shape 
to get it from the start to the end. So how'd you go? How did they go from here to here? How'd you go from here to here? Uh, how'd they go from here to here? You're gonna write it out. What transformations happen? Maybe it's two, maybe it's three, um, but go ahead and figure out what transformations were done on those shapes. And once you've done that, you should be about done with the assignment. Good luck.